Millions of people woke up this morning, grabbed their phones, and realized nothing was working. YouTube, Starbucks, Snapchat, banking services, and even Amazon's own services like their Alexa and Ring cameras all went out because of a massive AWS outage. And I gotta say, I'm a little upset that the Ring cameras went out because now I have no proof that my neighbor's dog took a shit in my yard last night. He must have known that the cameras went out and seized his moment, that mother Anyways, the internet was freaking out and many people were wondering if this was a cyber attack, which is a fair question, but based off of what we know at this time, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say it's probably not the case. However, the truth is honestly probably more scary. Let's go ahead and get into the details. So early Monday morning around 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, AWS's web services started throwing major errors in their US East 1 region. And now that's their biggest data center hub in Northern Virginia, basically AWS's and a lot of the internet services main favorite power strip essentially. And now many sources like CNET are labeling it as the night the internet broke. And they aren't exaggerating. However, this time it wasn't Wreck-It Ralph that caused the issue. And Mashable reported that AWS's core database service, DynamoDB, went haywire and their DNS services also started to fail. And basically if you don't know what DNS is, it's dynamic naming system. And and it's basically like the GPS for the internet. It tells your apps and your web browsers where to go to get to websites like google.com. Computers don't understand what regular human names are. They use IP addresses. So when we type in google.com, your web browsers and apps will reference DNS to find out that google.com equals 8.8.8.8 or whatever it is, and they'll be able to route your traffic correctly. So when DNS breaks, it's like your Uber forgot how to read traffic signs. It doesn't know how to get anywhere. And DynamoDB retrieves and stores data, like where your files and your messages live. And DNS tied in with those tells your apps and services where to go to get their files that DynamoDB services. So they kind of can interconnect. If DNS goes out, you're screwed. So when DynamoDB gets confused and DNS also starts to have amnesia, that's when you'll see a lot of services hosted by AWS starting to go out. And that's exactly what happened. And now Amazon hasn't divulged the exact details of what have happened. However, based on the timing, the fact that it occurred around 3 a.m., it smells like maintenance if you ask me. My guess, something got rerouted or deployed and the systems handling DNS couldn't resolve where traffic was supposed to go. If you combine that with DynamoDB having a bad day, boom. Anything tied to those databases suddenly can't talk or knows where it needs to go. But that's just my theory. I could be totally off. I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely just seems like it was maintenance and nothing malicious. And these issues combined together hit all kinds of stuff like Snapchat, Signal, Ring, Fortnite, so you know all the teens were throwing a fit, Roblox, so you know all the preteens were throwing a fit, and even Prime Video. Additionally, even some YouTube services were reported to potentially be impacted, but it's good now, so you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know you've been trying to do that all day, but also Venmo and a lot of different banking services were all having issues as well. And people were even reporting how they couldn't access their funds, which is actually very concerning. But regarding everybody's concern about a hack, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say, I don't really think it was. It sounds like a lot of this had to do with maintenance and it just was a human error issue or something like that. AWS engineers did confirm that it was an internal technical failure and it wasn't a security breach. Now, of course, all your conspiracy theorists could you know say that that's what they're saying now as a cover-up and we'll find out in eight months that there was some sort of breach just like we did with AT&T and a whole bunch of other services and I don't blame you honestly but just how it all came about I would have to go ahead and say it was just a mess up someone ended up doing some sort of maintenance they messed up and next thing you know half of the internet is broken and that's something that should be concerning we have so many companies organizations and even a lot of the government that has migrated so many things to the cloud and only takes one outage to knock out a third of the internet and outages are inevitable I mean we're humans AWS is ran by humans and as long as that continues we're going to have some sort of issue and if we have all these organizations relying on one cloud provider when stuff like this happens we're going to have many outages and of course this should concern us because well at least in my assess i contribute this to just some sort of maintenance issue however what if this was an actual hack you're telling me that a hacker organization can target one company and potentially take out a third of the internet well, that's crazy. These companies should be diversifying a lot more and not just relying on one cloud service. I know that's not always feasible and with money that might not be the case all the time. However, it is very concerning, especially with stuff like our government and in major services like banking that we shouldn't be completely reliant on cloud services. So that's just something to take into note. If these things do go out, you lose access to your money. I mean, can you tell me how much cash you have in your wallet right now? There's a lot of people posting that weren't able to access their funds and one person wasn't even able to get baby formula apparently and this is something that we rely on every day that can be a single point of failure for millions of people millions of services and all kinds of stuff like that and i mean things like this happen all the time i mean i've even experienced it in my job you'd be doing some sort of firewall upgrade or some sort of rerouting whatever it may be a database upgrade a server upgrade and then you have some sort of outage and generally, if it's nothing too crazy, you can roll back prior to all of your users getting in if you're like a small to mid-sized company that's not doing 24-hour operations. However, AWS and Amazon do not have that luxury. They've got millions of users all across the world. So if they have any sort of issue, someone's going to know and they're going to be getting all kinds of outage reports immediately on the internet. And boy, I can tell you right now, I would not want to be the AWS engineers on that call. 
their buttholes were probably so tight they could crush a diamond with those things. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if someone ends up getting fired for this. RIP. You're fired! Get out! Get out! And the whole thing just shows how fragile the internet can actually be sometimes, especially with a lot of our services going to the cloud. Just because things are in the cloud doesn't mean that you're safe from an outage. It just means that now when the outage does occur, it's technically not your fault, it's the service provider's fault. But the good thing about this is that AWS was able to get it fixed within a few hours. Um, I mean, right now it's about three o'clock over here and I noticed that my Alexa is back up and running. The bitch was ignoring me all day, but now it seems to be okay. And there might just be some minor ripples that are still occurring, but for the most part, everybody's good to go now. However, the bad news is this keeps happening. US East One is basically Amazon's problem child. It was one of their first data centers that were actually created and there's been a lot of outages and issues with that, which have resulted in stuff like this happening before. So what can we really take from this? Well, for starters, businesses shouldn't be relying completely on AWS to host their systems. Yes, it is very flexible, scalable, and can reduce your costs. However, you are relying on another service. And if your services go out, you're literally reliant on those AWS guys or Azure, or whoever it is to get your services back up. You can't do anything about it. You just got to wait. But overall, no cyber attack here, at least as of right now. I don't think that was the case. I think it was just maintenance and hopefully we've learned from it. Probably not though. But anyways, that's basically how the internet broke today. I hope it was informal. Let me know if this impacted you in any way or did you even really notice it? I honestly didn't notice it very much at all until I realized that my Alexa wasn't working and it was ignoring me. And uh, I was about to throw that thing out for a second until I started researching. But anyways, make sure you guys subscribe if you guys like things like this. I do all kinds of tech news, tech reviews, and you know, just all kinds of stuff related to tech and geek stuff. I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.